this video, we are going to go in depth into multimeters. They are indispensable for measuring voltages, currents and resistances. Analog multimeters used to be popular in the past, but as technology developed, digital multimeters have become more popular. The multimeter that we will be using in this video is an inexpensive one which is great for starter workshops or for home use. Please remember to only use your multimeter as shown in the instructions that came with the device. Operating mode selector. On this multimeter we have options to measure the following ranges. DC volts, 200 millivolts to 1000 volts, AC volts, 200 volts to 750 volts, DC amps, 200 microamps to 10 amps, resistance measurements, 200 ohm to 2000 kilo ohms, semiconductor test, diode continuity, and a transistor check. HFE or hybrid parameter forward current gain common emitter. This specific multimeter has three input sockets or jack inputs, 10 ADC, a red socket for 1DA measurement, COM, a black socket for negative lead or for the negative pole, volts and amps, a red socket used for testing voltage, current and resistance. Measuring voltage. When measuring voltage, connect the multimeter in parallel to the voltage supply or the component across which the voltage is being measured. If it is connected to a battery, the instantaneous voltage will be displayed. This will range between 0 volt for a discharged battery and 12.6 volts in the case of a charged battery. When measuring voltage across a component, the multimeter is connected to the connection points of the component. When it comes to circuits, the positive probe must be connected to the point in the circuit that is closest to the voltage supply. And similarly, the negative pole to the point in the circuit that is closest to the negative terminal of the voltage supply. Measuring current. In this case, the multimeter is always connected in series with the current it is measuring. When using a digital multimeter and the polarity is incorrect, the results will be displayed as negative. The way it works is similar to a water meter of a house. It is connected to the main supply of the house, just like a multimeter is connected in series. When a tap in the house is turned on, the counter on the water meter measures the amount of water flowing through the pipe. Measuring resistance. When measuring resistance, it is important that there is no current in the circuit while being measured. It will damage your ECU because every multimeter has a power source either a battery, such as a 9 volt in this case, or plugged into a wall outlet with some more expensive versions. Voltage is induced into the circuit or device by the multimeter and the resistance is then measured and then displayed. When more complex circuits are measured, make sure that you are only measuring the resistance on one component or the reading will not be accurate. If possible, disconnect or isolate the component being measured using Ohm's law to diagnose series circuit faults. Each component in a circuit requires a certain voltage to function, and because of this, we can diagnose faults within a circuit. In a basic circuit, a break means that the circuit is not complete, and we will have to use a multimeter to find out where the break is. To do this, place the negative pole of the multimeter to a ground source, such as the negative pole of a battery, or a part of the car that has bare metal. Place the positive pole of the multimeter on various points of the circuit, moving from the furthest point to the closest point in the circuit to the negative pole. You are looking for the last point where the voltage is 12 volts and the first point where the reading is 0 volts. In the same way, you can find any unwanted resistance, which is usually caused by corrosion. Here in our example circuit, we have a light bulb and a high level of resistance because of corrosion. The more resistance, the lower the voltage. Let's look at our multimeter and find out the source of the corrosion. Like we mentioned before, negative terminal goes to the ground and the positive on various points of the circuit moving from the furthest to the closest points in the circuit. If the unwanted resistance is high, the voltage will be low. Diagnosing circuits using resistance. Place the probes on either ends of the wire. 
when diagnosing what you are looking for is an abnormally high resistance in the circuit. The total resistance in the circuit should be less than 5 ohms but ideally zero. Testing spark plug high tension leads. When testing HT leads, set your multimeter to K ohms. In our example here, our example will be set to 2000 in the green section. Resistance is normally about 16 kilo ohms per meter, and normally a short HT lead can measure between 6 and 8 kilo ohms. Diagnosing circuit faults using amperage. This is where we look at unintentional paths to ground or what we call parasitic current drains. This will cause the battery to drain more than usual while the car is off. The general average can be between 20 to 50 milliamps. Start by turning the car and any accessories off. The multimeter must be connected in series with the positive battery terminal and positive cable. If there is an unusually high drain, the source can be found by removing the fuses one by one. If the drain stops when removing a specific fuse, then the circuit connected to that fuse has the fault. If there is still a high drain after that, then start looking at circuits that are directly connected to the battery, such as the alternator, the starter solenoid and the starter motor, depending on your vehicle. The entertainment system in a car can have an initially high current drain, which could last as long as five minutes. Any measurements should be done after that period. Fault finding. The example we have here is of a brake lamp wiring diagram and only shows components that are relevant to the specific system. The current goes from the battery at the top, through a fuse, then a lamp, then the earth connection at the bottom. There are four main types of faults. An open circuit, where there is a break in the wiring or a faulty connection. A short to earth, this is where a wire or connection touches the car's earth circuit, causing an increase in current, which in turn causes the fuses to melt. Short to power, a connector or wire comes into contact with a power source. This will cause the circuit to work unintentionally or not at all. Unwanted resistance, which will cause voltage drops and therefore reduce current in the circuit. Components will underperform if at all. Please like and subscribe. Keep on the lookout for more upcoming videos.